Hello, I'm Hannah, and this is Hannah's Books. Happy Solstice, and welcome back to this year's celebration of Bukaka. As I mentioned in my introduction to this series, I was inspired to make it a cozy edition, modeled on the 12 Days of Christmas and Coziness, hosted by Gina Stanier and Ellie at My Cozy Chronicles. I'm especially indebted to Gina for suggesting today's book, Winter Solstice, by Rosamond Pilcher. I remember my grandmother reading Pilcher's novel, The Shell Seekers, one summer, but until recently, I'd never read any of her work. One day, as I was packing away my summer clothes and swapping them out for flannels and sweaters, I turned on an audiobook version of Winter Solstice, borrowed through my library, and was immediately hooked. I loved the idea of a cozy book focused on solstice rather than Christmas. As a secular family that celebrates Jewish traditions, it seemed like a great choice for me. And we've had a long tradition of attending and then participating in our community solstice celebration held at the local library. In fact, tonight, our son Abe is going to join the Morris dancers, with whom he danced and fiddled when he was in high school. He was the only kid. All the rest of the team were grown-ups, ranging from their 20s to their 80s, I think. Well, as it turns out, Pilcher's book is not about the winter solstice at all, but instead about the ways winter can bring people together, including by making a joyful celebration of Christmas possible for a group of people who were experiencing losses of one kind and another. Pilcher's novel drew me in immediately. With only a few minor reservations, I found Julie Bond's audio narration to be quite engaging and beautifully matched to the story. The losses discussed in the first part of the book are the deaths of people the main characters love. Elfrida, a vibrant older woman, has lost her partner to Parkinson's disease. When she moves to a little cottage in a small town, she meets Oscar and his wife and daughter. Their friendship grows, and she connects with all three of them. When Oscar loses both his wife and daughter in an accident, and his large and beautiful home as well, he and Elfrida support each other in deeply loving ways. While they do in fact become romantically involved, the story of their relationship is about much more, about creating family and finding a way forward and not in the classic marriage plot style. Soon we meet younger generations who need the love of connection and support as well. The two main characters from the middle generation are both dealing with the loss that comes from a broken off romantic relationship. The youngest character confronts the fact that her mother and grandmother have distanced themselves from her because of their priorities to others. I won't go into the details here, but I do want to point out that these minor characters of ex-partners, mother and grandmother, are presented as self-centered, but not really as evil characters. Filter paints them with a great deal of compassion, which makes the book seem both cozier and more sophisticated. Filter isn't giving us black and white bad guys here. Well, these five people, different as they are, come together in a house in Scotland during the days before Christmas. Yes, there are some exceptional coincidences in this book. In addition to the fact that magically everyone meets the person they need to meet in that moment, money and other tangible security seems to magically appear several different times to people who didn't have financial security before, etc., And there are a few sort of cringy moments, especially how the housekeeper is portrayed. But overall, this story is just really, really lovely. Pilcher writes beautifully. The characters are well-developed, changing over the course of the book, even though only a few days go by. The cozy genre definitely requires a calmness and sweetness. And Pilcher delivers while maintaining a certain kind of honesty about grief and other personal struggles. Before I wrap up and encourage you to pick up this book if you feel you're in need of a dose of coziness this season, I do want to talk about one particular tiny thread that winds its way through the book, and that's religion. In the very early pages when Elfrida first meets Oscar, 
after hearing him play a church organ, they have a pretty serious conversation. Immediately, I thought of all the times I have met another introvert and failed at having a normal social conversation. Quote, Are you a religious person? Alfreda asked impulsively and then wished that she hadn't. Too soon for such a personal question. But he remained unfazed. I don't know, but I've spent the whole of my life steeped in the sacred music, the liturgies and magnificats of the Anglican Church, and I would find it uncomfortable to live in a world where I had no person to thank. I think a lot of us feel that desire to express gratitude including those of us who don't have faith, that there really is someone to thank. Well, Alfreda responds with another reason secular people sometimes connect to religious tradition. Quote, I'm not a bit religious. I only went to church that Sunday because I was feeling a bit isolated and needed the company of other people. As events unfold, things change a bit. In a moment of great pain, Oscar's sense of gratitude is gone, and he starts to be angry at the God he wasn't even sure he believed in. When the vicar calls on him after the accident and mentions God with the goal of giving him comfort, Oscar tells Alfreda that he thought the vicar had taken leave of his senses. I cannot believe in a God who would take my daughter away from me, he says to Alfreda. Although I can't find the exact quote, my memory is that Alfreda tells him that as she sees it, God too would have been heartbroken about the daughter's death. At least for these two non-religious women, both the character of Valfrida and this particular reader, that interpretation feels very meaningful. Well, I've chosen to share very few plot points here, and although there are in fact a lot of plot points, the main reason I responded to this book was the combination of the author's great compassion for all the characters, and her narrative of gentle, everyday life. One thing I was a little worried about, as I assumed it would be necessary for a cozy book, was that the ending would be perfect and all tied up with a bow. This book, while it does have a clear sense of resolution, actually ends in a more sophisticated way, where there's a very clear and somewhat uncertain future ahead for all the main characters. Well, that will do it for today. Hope you have a wonderful solstice and face the darkness with as much light as you can. See you soon here on Hannah's Books.